Today I'll be showing you the OSCE of how to isolate a mandibular right fore when using a rubber dam for endodontic treatment. First of all you need to act as if you're dealing with a real patient in a real practice. So when you start your OSCE tell the examiner that you're, you'll wash your hands, put on your goggles, don't forget your goggles, and put on gloves. After put on, putting on gloves, you have to check that you have all the materials and instruments you need. So first of all, you need to check that you have a rubber dam, a plastic instrument, a clamp holder, rubber dam punch, some clamps to choose from, frame, scissors, widgets, dental floss. What you need to do before starting anything, you need to pre-floss around the tooth that you're going to isolate to remove any packed or stuck food. So for the lower right four, pass it through the mesial contact and pull, pass it through the distal contact and pull. Now you're sure that it's clear. Second of all, what you need to do is to choose the side of the rubber dam you, you, you'll be working on. Any rubber dam has two sides in it. One is shiny, the other one is mud. Always put the mud side to the outer surface. Why? Because the shiny side, if you're working on the shiny side, it will reflect light, which will disturb you and affect your performance. Also, the mud side will absorb a little bit of moisture. So you always, you always want to choose the mud side to be facing outwards. Second of all, sometimes they provide you with a stamped uh, rubber dam, sometimes they provide you with an unstamped one. If they provide you with a stamped one, just choose the hole where the lower four is and then just punch it. If not, I want you to imagine the rubber dam on the patient's mouth divided into four quadrants and choose the quadrants you want to work in, put a hole in the area where you think the tooth that you want to isolate is and just pierce it. Okay? Second thing, you want to choose your clamp. You have a lot of clamp types, winged and wingless. In this video, I'll be showing you how to do the wing technique, okay? In order to do that, you have to first choose the right clamp for the right tooth. For a lower four, you have to, to choose a clamp with a smaller hole in it. If you can see, these are two clamps, okay? One of them has a small hole, one of them has a bigger hole. The bigger hole one is for molars and the smaller one is for premolars. So just choose a clamp with a smaller hole. Now you need to secure floss to the clamp to prevent any aspiration of the clamp if it was lost in the patient's mouth. So you want to take a foot long of dental floss. You want to imagine where you'll put the, the clamp in the patient's mouth. The rim of the clamp should always be distal. The rim should always be distal, okay? So if we consider this and we, we put this in the patient's mouth, the rim, the rim is distal now, okay? Now I know where the buccal side of the clamp will be because the, the floss needs to be hanging out of the buccal side, so not to be on the lingual side, okay? So now because I know where the buccal side is, I'll tie a knot on the lingual side of the clamp using the floss, pass it through the hole, do a knot okay just did a knot secure the knot maybe do another one over it Okay, then I need you to roll the floss around the rim all over through to the buckle side of the clamp.
as you can see, I'm rolling it over to the buckle side. Then, just pass it through the hole where you think the buckle side will be. There you go. If you can see with me, dental floss from the lingual side rolled over the rim and through the buccal side. So now, when you put it in the patient's mouth, this floss will be on the buccal side, okay? You can use scissors and just cut off extras from the lingual side. Right now, your clamp is ready. What you want to do is to secure the clamp to the rubber dam. In order to do that, you need to punch the rubber dam. I want to tell you a question that sometimes they ask in the OSCE. They sometimes ask you which hole are you going to use to punch the rubber dam. In order to show you that, I need to do it. I need, I need to draw. To draw. I need to draw a um, demonstration drawing. Let me explain this for you. There are two punches in the market. One of them has five holes in it, the other one has six holes. The most used ones are the ones with the five holes. And the five holes one, the smallest hole, is for the lower incisors. The second one is for the upper incisors. Third one is for upper and lower canines and premolars. Fourth one is for molars, upper and lower. Fifth one is for it's the biggest one, it's used to anchor a clamp, so if you put a clamp before you put the rubber dam and you want to slide the rubber dam over it, you need to punch the bigger one, okay? In the six hole one, it's the same, except that there's a one molar hole, and one extra molar, molar hole, so basically, smallest one is for the lower in incisors, second one is for the upper incisors, third one for the upper and lower canines and premolars, fourth one is for the lower molars, fifth one is for the upper molars, and the last one, which is the biggest one, is for anchoring it over a clamp. Okay? So for now, because we're isolating the mandibular right, first premolar, we need to use the third. We need to use the third hole. In order to do that, I'll just choose where I want to pierce, and I just have to do the piercing. Okay? Now you got our, your hole. Remember, if, the, if it's not stamped, just imagine it on the patient's mouth, divide it into four quadrants, choose the quadrant you want to work on and pierce in it. Now what I want to do is to secure the clamp to the rubber dam. Remember the rim is distal. So. Now it's secured to the rubber dam. Next, you want to apply all of this setting to the patient's mouth. Some people like to secure the, the frame on the rubber dam before they apply it in the patient's mouth. Some people don't. What I prefer is to put it in the end. So right now, what I want to do is to hold the clamp holder. Always, when you use the clamp holder, always put it on your hand, like your hand should be below the clamp. So don't hold it like that. Hold it like that. The clamp should be upwards. And then put the beak of the clamp holder through the holes of the clamp, okay, and just apply it on the lower four. And remove the clamp. Can you see? Let me zoom in on that to show you.
Now, what you want to do is to release the rubber dam off the wings using the plastic instrument. That's number one, and that's number two from the lingual side. I just released the rubber dam from the wings so it slided and touched the tooth all around. What you need to do now is use an another piece of floss, pass it through the mesial surface and the distal surface to make sure that the rubber dam is down to the gum. And please see that the dental floss is on the buccal side. Now what you want to do is place your rim. Your rim has this shape, this arc shape. The arc should follow the chin of the patient so you can't put it all the way around. You'll get that, just put it, you'll find that the arc should be on the patient's chin. Now what you want to do is just secure the rubber dam to the frame. Just stretch it on the pins of the frame. Remember, in real life, you should cut either this part or bend it so the patient can breathe normally. Okay? Also, you can secure the dental floss to the frame by just rolling it over the frame once. As you can see, we just isolated the lower right four for endodontic treatment. Questions that can be asked in this OSCE are, what was the technique that you used? This was the direct wing technique. If you're using a wingless clamp, you can just say that it was, it was the direct wingless technique. Other questions are, what are the advantages of using a rubber dam? Number one, to prevent cross-infection between the patient and the dentist. Number two, to isolate the tooth from the oral environment. Number three, is for better visibility. Disadvantages of placing a rubber dam are Number one, it is technique sensitive. Number two, it's costly. Number three, problems with patients that breathe through their mouth. Because as you can see, we just block their mouth. So if, if they're breathing through their mouth, it can cause them some problems. That's it for today. What you can do for to remove it is to hold it as I told you before. And just place the beaks on the holes. open it and remove the clamp. Once the clamp is removed, you can just pull it. <coughs> You'll be fine. If you have any rubber dam around the tooth, use a dental floss to remove it. That's, for, that's it for today. Good luck. If you would like more free videos from ORE Tutor, please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.